If you work in architectural hardware, you are working with electrified hardware in some capacity. While having a colleague, vendor, or contractor who is a trained electrician is important, you can save time and avoid confusion if you understand some fundamental electrical terms and components. Electricity works within a circuit. Every circuit has four basic elements, load, power source, conductor, and switch. In architectural hardware, the load is the product that uses power to do something useful, like securing a door. Examples of loads are electrified locks, electric strikes, and electric latch retraction exit devices. Manufacturers in their catalogs, data sheets, and installation instructions describe how these products operate mechanically and electrically, and will list each product's electrical requirements. More on that in a minute. If you are not familiar with these products, after you finish this video, please watch another video in this series, Intro to Electrified Locking Hardware. Another element in a circuit is the power source. Power sources provide the necessary operating voltage, and they must be able to handle the current flow the electrified hardware requires. Let's start with voltage. Voltage measures the potential energy of an electric field to cause an electric current in an electrical conductor. Think of voltage as simply the potential force. The higher the voltage, the more potential electric force there is. By the way, voltage doesn't go anywhere. A lot of people incorrectly say that voltage goes through or around a circuit, when in fact, voltage is at or across a circuit. Most of the electrical outlets in the US, in our homes and in other non-residential buildings such as schools, offices, retail stores, etc., provide 110 volts of potential energy. In the architectural hardware world, most electrified hardware products get their energy from a separate power supply that takes the building's 110 volts AC and converts it to 12 or 24 volts DC to provide consistent, reliable electric energy to the hardware. In architectural hardware, 50 volts or less is considered low voltage, and some states and jurisdictions will issue licenses for individuals to work on 50 volts or less. Otherwise, one needs to be an electrician. The voltage requirement of the electrified hardware must match the output voltage of the power source for the hardware to work correctly. Too much or too little energy, that is, too much or too little voltage, will result in problems. Current is what flows through an electrical circuit while amps is a measure of that flow. Just like not enough water flow makes for a lousy shower, not having enough amperage for electrified hardware means the products won't work quite right. Manufacturers of these products will tell you how many amps a product needs to operate properly. The designation for an amp is the letter A. Amperage can also be listed in milliamps, designated as a small m with a capital A. 1000 milliamps equals one amp. You might see the amperage requirements for, say, an electrified lock listed as 0.25 amps or 250 milliamps. Most electrified hardware products require less than one amp. Also, one other note about amp requirements, some products such as the Von Duprin QEL, Quiet Electric Latch Retraction Exit Device, need some extra amperage initially. The QEL device, for example, requires 1.4 amp inrush, that is, to retract the latch bolt initially, and then only 0.14 amps holding to keep the latch retracted. Once you know the amperage requirements of the electrified products and the amperage rating of the power supply, you can determine if there is sufficient electrical flow for the products to work properly. Let's try it. Say you have a Schlage power supply that provides two amps, and you have four Von Duprin electric strikes that each require 0.25 amps. All good? Yes. What if you wanted to power eight electric strikes with this two amp power supply? In theory, it will work. However, in practice, it's good to have a little wiggle room. In general, we recommend keeping the load's amp requirements at or below 90% of the power supply's output. There's one more aspect of current, and that is how it moves within a circuit. You will encounter two types of current, alternating current, AC, and direct current, DC. The most efficient way to deliver electrical current across long distances is via alternating current, hence why utilities provide our homes with 110 volts AC. Without going into the differences between these two types of current, Here's what you need to know to get started in our business. Today, electrified hardware is very seldom powered with AC. For those times when it is, you can use a transformer to step down the voltage to the right level. Since most electrified hardware products require either 12 or 24 volts DC, you will use a power supply to both lower the voltage and convert it from AC to DC. 
And, for even more reasons that go beyond the scope of this video, power supplies are the most popular power source for electrified hardware circuits. Oh, if you try to use AC to power a product that requires DC, you could see blue smoke. Let's move on to another element in all circuits, the conductor. Commonly a wire or cable that carries the flow of electricity in a circuit. When it comes to the wires in an electrified hardware circuit, there are two important terms to learn, gauge and wire run. In the electrical world, gauge indicates the diameter of the wire, and this diameter determines how much electrical current the wire can safely carry. Smaller wires carry less current than larger wires. In North America, the unit of measure is designated as AWG, the American wire gauge. Here's the slightly confusing part. To indicate the wire gauge size, the bigger the number, the smaller the wire's diameter. For example, 18 gauge wire is physically smaller than 12 gauge wire, and therefore, 18 gauge wire carries less current than 12 gauge wire. The most common size of wire used in our industry is 18 gauge. Almost every electrified hardware installation will require something between 12 and 18 gauge wire. Also common in this industry is the use of cables with more than one wire running through it. You might see a note calling for 4x18 gauge or 18-4 wire, which describes a cable with four separate 18 gauge conductors running through it. Typically, the wire gauge is printed on the cable. It's important to note the telecom industry commonly uses 22 gauge wire. Often, it is mistakenly used with our products, with bad results. The other variable relative to wiring is the length of the wire run, the distance from the product to the power source. Wiring has some resistance in it. The longer the wire run, the more resistance there will be. Resistance turns current into heat. As current turns to heat, less is available to do other work. This phenomenon is called voltage drop. If your power source is very far away from your electrified locking product, you will need a larger gauge wire to make the system work properly. Most of us don't need to know what gauge is required with a particular product or wire run. We just need to know what gauge means and that manufacturers have charts to tell technicians, installers, and electricians any wire gauge and wire run requirements for their products. Here is an example of the chart for the Schlag ND electrified lock. By the way, the use of the wrong gauge of wire is a fairly common cause of product performance problems in our industry. Now, let's talk about the switch in a circuit. A switch opens and closes to control the flow of current. An open switch prevents the flow of electricity, whereas a closed switch allows the electricity to flow freely. Switches in our industry often come in the form of hardware. For example, the switch in a circuit might be a push button that a receptionist uses to remotely unlock a door, a motion sensor that sends a signal to the automatic door operator to open a door, or a card reader that will unlock a door when a valid card is presented. In the case of the card reader, the reader is performing two functions. It serves as a gatekeeper for the opening and as a switch in the circuit. So, that's the four basic parts of an electrical circuit. Load, power source, conductor, and switch. And some of the important terms associated with each of those. There's just one more term we want to define for you. Fuses. Fuses are a safety device. When current goes through wires or other electrical devices, it heats up the wiring. When a problem occurs that creates excess current, the fuse melts and physically opens the circuit, preventing any additional damage. Similar to the circuit breakers in our newer homes, when a fuse in one of our products blows because of excess current, it cuts off the flow of electricity in that circuit. However, the fuses in our products must be replaced if blown, and in many cases, the only way to know for certain if a fuse is good or bad is to test it. Thanks for watching. To learn more about our Allegiant family of architectural hardware doors and access control, visit the training page at www.allegiant.com/us.